Scott Schumann, the sartorialist. What made me want to work in fashion? Uh, when I was growing up, I played sports like all the regular you know, kids in the Midwest, boys in the Midwest, and uh, would read Sports Illustrated and you know, read all about all the athletes that I liked and kept reading that, uh, what they were spending their money on, you know, cars and music and fashion and uh, you know, so I'd start picking up those magazines and I think um, I ended up becoming more interested in fashion than I did sports. You know, and the better I dressed, the more attention I seemed to get from women, which was more attention than what I was getting on the football field. And the blogging part was pretty easy, you know, I, I had an idea for the sartorialist, this idea of mixing photographs of guys that I knew were stylish with guys that I knew were fashionable, which are two different things. Um, but I only really knew about websites at that time, and I knew that a website would take too much time. Too many other people would have to be involved. And uh, when I happened to be you know, going through the internet, I found a, a blog, just happened to, to, to click onto a blog. And I'm the kind of person that once I see something interesting, I just start hitting all the buttons trying to figure out how they're doing it. And it was an interior design blog, actually. And uh, I thought it was pretty cool. She had like 30 comments, you know, she had some good visuals up. And once I saw that, I was able to look at it in an abstract enough way to be able to say, you know, I could do this with my photographs. You know, the, once I figured out how she was doing it and how simple it was to do, I thought, you know, that's the format I want to do. You know, there weren't really any um, kind of, uh, definitely I don't think any street style blogs, maybe Face Hunter was up right about that time, but I didn't really know it in the beginning. Um, but I saw the potential of using, you know, a, a blog as a, as a visual format as opposed to it just text-driven. At least, I think most of the blogs at that time were very text-driven. If they had a little bit of visual, it wasn't very important. Where, for me, I thought, you know, this would be a great way to put photographs up and then, and then put a little bit of text to create a conversation. But uh, the simplicity is, is what made the blogging part. So the simplicity and the interaction with the audience were the two things that I think made it most attractive. The difference between what designers create are, you know, they're creating a, a little world every season, you know, head to toe, a full look, you know, uh, head, you know, shoes, bags, dresses, the whole thing. Where street fashion is, you know, what people are really wearing. You know, there's an element of new, there's an element of previous seasons, there's um, your own history, you know, your sweatshirt from high school and uh, vintage pieces. And, you know, it's that kind of combination I find so much more interesting than just the runway but you know and I love fashion I love going to the runway shows it's not so much um, for me a shopping trip as it is you know the appreciation of the craft of these you know um, design geniuses you know who come up with beautiful color combinations and beautiful uh, proportion um, suggestions and these kind of ideas so I, I look at the runway shows in a very different way it's just kind of a, um, a romantic uh, artistic interpretation of how they would like to see fashion going forward but uh, for me, it's it's much more abstract. The runways uh, shows are much more abstract than you know the, what ends up on people is much more real to me. Uh, well, realistically, a fashion insider. I mean, I was in the business for 15 years before I started the blog. So, you know, even though it was in a different part of the the business, it was in sales and marketing. Um, none of the people that I've met, you know, since I've been doing the blog, did I know really beforehand. But I knew about the business, you know, and I. That's how I really came up with the eye. You know, I think part of what I do is the photography. I think that's half of it. I think I'm able, I learned how to be able to shoot something in the romantic way that I see it. Um, but then the other half of it is the editing, you know, who I choose to shoot. And not so much because of the drama and over, over dramatic nature of the way they're dressed. Sometimes it's very, very subtle, you know. My background in tailoring and, and pattern, make, pattern making, and uh, I think, really helped me understand, you know, the subtleties of a suit, you know, and why a guy can look great looking very subtle in a suit. I think that's what really separates me is, um, you know, I have a real understanding of actual clothes and how they work and how they should fit, and uh, you know, a reasonably good artistic um, uh, version of photography that kind of captures that, and I think um, that was really the kind of the best combination. Uh, the difference between fashion and style is uh, fashion is 
is the sometimes. You know, it's the thing that's happening at that moment. You know, sometimes it might be pointy shoes, sometimes it might be heels, sometimes it might be flats. Where style, I think, is something that's always there in your own personal wardrobe, whether it's a, a navy cardigan, uh, reading glasses like this. Um, but that's different for everybody. You know, everybody's version of style is totally different. And, you know, that's what I think keeps me going out on the street every day is going out and kind of seeing the, the variations and what things maybe I had never seen in quite that way. That I find very curious in how people will um, be able to communicate their own persona through their clothing, their posture, the way they wear their hair. Uh, you know, I think all those elements end up becoming very interesting. Because I don't think I'm really particularly a, a people person. Um, so for me, I think it's, it's interesting to kind of be able to read people in that way. Uh, my favorite cities to shoot, uh, Milan in Italy, obviously. Uh, the guys look great, the women look great. There's um, an old school romance. I mean, it feels like Italy in the 1950s. You know, the guys at the, at the bars still wear beautiful white dinner jackets, and uh, you know, there's a formality there. I mean, it doesn't matter if it's 90 degrees in the summer, uh, and it's you know, killer hot in, in Milan. The guys still put on their, their jackets to leave their office to go get lunch and bring it back to the office. You never see that in America. Guys barely can put on their, you know, their shirts to go to the office or, you know, keep their tie done. Um, so I think there's a romance, you know, that they're willing to um, and enjoy that formality that they've created there in Milan. And, you know, all across Italy, but especially in Milan. Um, so I love that formality. But at the same time, after about a week, that I've had enough of that. And I'm ready to go to Paris where it's, more sexy and more, um, uh, more dramatic, more challenge, you know, in terms of how they put things together. Uh, and then back to America, I really love being able to go to those three different places. And, you know, in America, we're so much more sporty, so much more color, so much more, um, uh, so much more different in the way that we uh, talk about our style and the way we, uh, exude our style. We have, in, like in Milan, for, exa for example, they're very narrow. You know, they, everybody dresses in a few certain ways, and they have beautiful variations on those few kind of styles, but in America there's a million different styles, you, you know, rocker and vintage and sporty and preppy, and, and so I like that variation. So one without the other is not nearly as interesting. I've been to Hong Kong, which I thought was very interesting, Beijing, um, but I want to go there more. In 2010, you know, that's one of my big uh, challenges is to try and make it through Asia more. And I don't know. I'm curious to see what I find. You know, I think uh, in Japan, I think you know, there's a lot of style and a lot of subcultures. But uh, it'll be interesting to see how much of them, how much of the people wearing those clothes are really expressing something about who they are or who they want to be. And uh, it'll be very interesting to see, once, especially you know, once you get there, once you get to a certain city, like in Stockholm, you really get to know the people a little bit and what they're saying through their clothes. You know, it's more, uh, to me, I think it's much more interesting than just the clothes they're wearing or the, the length of the skirt. You start to, to understand something about that culture. You know, in Rio, none of the girls have short hair. A lot of the interviews I did in Rio, people would say, what do you want to find in Rio? And I'd say, well, the one girl with short hair because they just don't do it. And once you get to know them a little bit, you realize that all the girls are afraid to cut their hair short because they're afraid their men won't like them. So what you think of as a beautiful, natural style actually becomes a style out of fear. And it kind of changes your perception of it a little bit. So Milan, if, or for um, Japan, I'm very curious to see who is really doing something unique and who's just doing something because they've heard that's the way they do it in Florence or Milan. Well, by that question, it's, uh, what's that, an oxymoron? Trend and classic. I don't know if we can put those two together. Um, I don't know, because it's totally different for everybody. You know, for me, a, a, a navy cardigan, you know, always looks great. Um, Converse tennis shoes, you know, just always work, but that's for me. Um, and that's just it. You know, I don't, at least for me, I don't ever really look for trends. I'm looking for just what captures my attention at that time. And rarely do I ever look back and try and put together trends or say, you know, this kind of trend is important. For me, it's about the individual 
uh, expression. And if you go back and look through the uh, through the archives, you know you might find certain things to become trends, but it's just not something that particularly interests me. Well, the blog took off pretty quickly, and uh, I think it's because I had a particular point of view. You know, there's been other street style photographers, Bill Cunningham in the New York Times, you know, is like the, the godfather of modern street style photography, uh, and other people historically. But I think what what they had always done was they were always trying to, to find the most dramatic, the people that you wouldn't see every day, the people that were really different, uh, where I shot things that people would aspire to, you know, something that maybe they would see every day but didn't really know the difference between something done well and something not done as well, a suit that fits a guy really well as opposed to just another suit, or a dress, you know, that, that fits a woman beautifully, or the way that she's put this combination of you know, uh, fur and an open toe shoe, you know, two totally disseparate kind of ideas, and yet she's put them together in a way, and you go, wow, okay, that does look really great. Um, so I think it took off, not because I was shooting the incredibly different, but because I was shooting something people could relate to, a lot of different people could relate to. And uh, I don't think there was one time, one particular thing that made me say, you know, this is really becoming popular. But for me it was, um, you know, these really heartfelt emails I would get from people that, uh, you know, that meant something to them, that they could look at these pictures and say, you know, I look like that guy, but I don't look like him yet. You know, I want to look like him. I'm big like him, I'm a little chubby like him, um, but he looks great and he's dressed better in his clothes than I am. So I know these guys were printing these photographs up and taking it to Nordstrom or Saks or Dillard's or wherever and saying, help me look like this and would be able to achieve it because it was never in my blog about how expensive it is, you know, um, almost if you look at most of the guys that are really well dressed it's just the attention to detail and anybody can do that you know that's just taking it to alterations and getting the right amount of cuff and all these little things that aren't about uh, the expense but just about the attention to detail I think uh, economic situation is affected in the sense that you know a lot of people that have money always have money and uh, they're still buying and they're still shopping they're just not talking about it when we go to when I go to Fashion Week, you know, people are still wearing new things and they're still shopping. But I think uh, they feel a little more guilty when they've had to let you know five people go from the company and not bring two people that usually go to Europe uh, to Europe. So they're still shopping. They're just not talking about it that much. Um, but it's also I think helped people find a romance in shopping in their own closet again. You know, going back and looking at the clothes they already have. We've become so such consumers that I think people kind of forget you know what what humongous closets we have full of more clothes than what they could ever wear so I think it's maybe you know open people's eyes again to really looking at what they have and kind of re-engineering it and uh, reworking it and I think that's good you know I was in the business for 15 years my ex-wife was a designer I had a showroom where I worked with young designers so I was very familiar with what designers look for when they're going out to look for inspiration and they're not looking for trends you know if it's something that's already out on the street now that's a trend now it's not going to be something they're going to design for a year from now it's usually much more abstract and uh, it might be a detail it might be color combination it could be uh, even the way the, the posture of a girl you know I think one of the things that a lot of designers look at my site um, is uh, not specifically the pieces that I'm shooting but I think they maybe look at a girl and think, oh, you know, I love the way that girl looks, and, uh, but I would never dress her like that. You know, that girl inspires me. But uh, I love the idea of a long dress. Maybe she's wearing a long dress and they're thinking, oh, you know, it's been a long time since I've designed a long dress, uh, but I would never put it in a floral print. I would do it this way. So I don't think they're looking at my site for specific inspiration. I think they're looking at in an abstract way to get them thinking about that customer and that girl and that kind of girl they would like to dress and how they would do it a little bit differently and uh, so I think that's probably the the most realistic or even the guys you know I know a lot of the designers take a lot of those old guy pictures I take these uh, kind of really stylish old guys and I know it's not because of the specific s clothes that they're wearing but it's the posture and it's the attitude and it's the elegance of these guys that uh, is attracting them that inspires them and it's the same thing for me you know, I, I'm totally inspired. It's not that I want to dress like an 80-year-old Milanese guy, but uh, the fact that they can still carry themselves with such a, um, 
such a, an elegance, even at that age, I think uh, is very inspiring. And whether it's M Milan or, or Harlem or wherever, um, I think that's something the guys really key on, a lot of the designers key in on. Uh, when I'm shooting, I try and keep it just very easy, very um, unplanned. You know, I'm just walking around on the street looking for somebody that uh, um, I think looks cool and that might be able to get a good shot. Um, uh, today I was at Jamba Juice, and uh, it was a very cool girl and a very cool uh, young college girl. And you know, she had a great coat and a little cardigan with a fur trim and a, another print dress. And you know, nothing that she was wearing was expensive. It was all kind of thrown together, but thrown together just right. You know, the color combination, how cute she looked. She was very kind of charming. Even though she was a tall girl, she had a very kind of small persona, very kind of shy persona. And uh, all of that's important. I mean, to me, the persona that she's creating, whether it's a big dramatic one or a quiet shy one, um, the way they stand, all of that is something that you want to try and capture in some way, at least my perception of who that person is in the photograph. And... Uh, so that's, you know, you never know where you're going to meet these people. That's why it's fun. You know, that's why um, I enjoy going out and getting lost, you know, hopefully every day or every other day and just seeing what's out there because by the end of the day, I usually get back to my office and think, oh, I never would have thought I'd run into that kind of person there doing that thing. And uh, by constantly challenging myself, um, that's why I think keeps the integrity and the um, sincerity of the blog. No, I haven't had too many people. I mean, people turn me down, but I think I've gotten pretty good at being able to tell who will probably turn me down, you know, and being able to read people a little bit. You know, if someone's walking really fast, then it looks like they probably have somewhere they're going. So I don't get too many people that are upset. Um, I did have someone who was in the background of one of my pictures that I put up uh, like two weeks ago, and, it, you know, totally unreal. He just happened to be walking by on the street, but he just happened to be looking just at the right moment at the subject I was taking a picture of. And uh, so he emailed me today uh, feeling that maybe he should be compensated for being in that picture and, 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 uh, or at least a big print or something like that. So I thought that was a little bit odd. Um, but uh, not, too many, not too many weird or bad stories. I haven't been beaten up or chased or anything yet. Uh, Garon Storé, uh, dot .fr. Uh, not just because she's my girlfriend, but I do truly think that she's got the best women's fashion blog in the world. Um, her point of view is great. You know, she's, um, her writing is great. Her photography is great. Her, um, the way that she communicates to her reader is brilliant. The way she writes and the ability to be that stylish and that fashionable and yet that approachable, uh, it's a real challenge, you know, to be able to do that and do it consistently every day because... You can't fake it. She's doing a lot of things that other blogs just aren't doing, you know, graphically, um, that make it really interesting. I mean, my blog's doing very well. My audience is bigger than hers. But there are days when I look at her blog and I'm totally jealous, totally pissed that she hasn't told me how, did, how she did some of those things, that, you know, just little technical things to make uh, shots look great or, you know, how she's laying them out on the page or whatever. So, I mean, it's uh, a good kind of challenging relationship, but I think uh, she probably does better than anybody else right now. Which book and I hate her for that. I don't know, I guess uh, with magazines I've never really looked at them that way. You know, I, uh, being someone who, you know, I'm a self-taught photographer and I taught myself photography just looking, looking, looking at the magazines. So to be honest, a lot of them, you know, I hardly ever read. You know, I don't really look at their, what their real fashion opinion is. Um, for me, it's always been very abstract, you know, so, um, I don't know, I can't really, I love my fashion magazines, you know, a lot of times I get a question, you know, do you think blogs will replace fashion magazines, and I hope not, you know, because I love my GQ and Vogue and Paris Vogue and all of that, I think I look at them less now just because I've started to develop my own photographic style that I'm very comfortable with, but uh, uh, they really are the ones that taught me uh, the idea of how I wanted to shoot. Well, any, almost everyone in Hollywood, uh, almost everyone in the record business. Um, I don't know, you know, to be honest, I think um, it's funny, I don't really, you know, I'm not much of a, you know, I maybe said this before, I'm not much of a people person. You know, in doing my blog, uh, it's one of the few places where being incredibly selfish is actually very positive. 
um, because I'm not really, when I'm taking a picture of someone, like I, I don't really put their names down. Rarely do I put the people's names down um, because it's just not that important. You know, I'm taking a picture of someone. It's my perception of who they are. I'm taking it be the way I'm taking it because it's some, I want to be able to look at, I want to enjoy the picture. So it's my selfishness that's actually very generous in the sense that, you know, I share the picture, I'm trying to take a nice picture of them, but I'm doing it for totally selfish reasons. And uh, one of the things that I think people misunderstand on the blog is just because I take a picture of someone doesn't mean they have great personal style. I mean, I don't know these people. Most of them I've never met before. Um, you know, maybe there's just one thing in the look that I really love, and that's all I want to focus on. And I try and shoot it in a way that um, highlights that. But, uh, you know, I don't really have a lot of people. I, I'm just not judgmental that way. And I think that sincerity, you know, comes through in the blog. I mean, to me, it really doesn't matter who they are. It's not that I don't want to shoot people in Hollywood or models or musicians. Uh, if I ran into 20 musicians in a row, they all look great. I'd shoot them. But that just rarely ever happens. I don't really um, fall into that. But uh, it's, for me, it's much, much more abstract. Yeah, I think uh, Tony Randall on The Odd Couple always looked great. I always thought he looked really cool. I don't think uh, fashion's really changed much in the last five years. I mean, the system is the system. Um, if it was really going to change in a major way, now would have been the time to do it. You know, so many companies are closing. But they're not really changing their method of how they do it. They're jumping on the new hot thing, whatever it is. You know, right now it's blogs. You know, who knows what it's going to be next, holograms or whatever. Um, and I think a lot of companies are closing, which is great. You know, I think we're way too oversaturated. Too many brands, too many stores, too many labels. Um, so, you know, if it was going to change, now would be the time to do it, but it's not really changing that much. You know, shipping's not changing. You know, I'd, I'd love to see uh, a time when you know, when it actually gets cold is when winter clothes hit the store, you know, as opposed to the winter clothes hit the store always on the hottest day in August is when all the winter clothes hit. So I think um, because of technology and because of this kind of speed of digital, uh, digital internet and everything, uh, it will change soon because smart designers, young designers are going to be able to start showing their collection in a much wider audience and ship those products closer to the real time. They won't need Vogue and all these other places. They have to work so far in advance to uh, promote their fashion because they'll be able to do it right, you know, themselves through the internet, right to their audience, and be able to um, uh, ship the clothes accordingly to that audience. You know, and I think there's very uh, a day very soon where, you know, you'll be able to get some kind of digital printout of your body and have the clothes made for your shape. It, it, It'll be a new age of tailoring. And, um, you know, it's definitely more than five years off, but I don't think it's a, a really far away, you know. I think it's definitely in the near future. And that will really change fashion, the fashion system, uh, in the sense that, uh, you know, you won't just have all this excess of clothes and things shipped so early because you need X amount of time to sell. Hopefully it'll become much more efficient, much more effective if you're actually making clothes that fit people and clothes that people are ordering and want as opposed to trying to guess what they might want. My readers are, are located uh, everywhere. You know, one of the things that I knew about doing a, a photo-driven blog was that you didn't have to read English to be able to enjoy the photographs. You know, there were elements of people that are looking at it for the fashion content. There's an element of people that kind of like to live vicariously through all these different crazy places I'm going. Um, there's an element that likes to share their fashion idea. Maybe, you know, they had always dreamed of becoming a fashion designer and moving to New York or Milan, but for whatever reason, a family reason or whatever, they weren't able to do that. So they're stuck in Wisconsin or wherever they are, and this is their chance to kind of be in that community a little bit, share their comments, look at fashion, share it with, uh, an, with an audience. One of the things I'm very proud of is we've been able to create an audience that's respectful that you, know, you can talk about your fashion ideas, what you like, what you don't like, in a respectful form. Um, so with that said, I think it's, uh, it's all over the place. I mean, all I know is right now when I travel and I do these book tours, you know, we always get a really, really good turnout and a very, a very varied audience. You know, men, women, young, old, rich, poor. Um, the audience very much looks like, uh, like the uh, photographs in my blog, photographs in my book, which is something I'm very proud of.
New York has changed. New York changed a lot. You know, I've been here almost 20 years, and uh, maybe when I first moved here, people would have said, "Oh, it'd be a horrible place to raise kids." And now I think everyone would agree it's a pretty good place to raise kids. It's clean. It's uh, uh, you know modern. I mean, I travel around now a lot, and um, I still think New York looks great. You know, I mean, all the time there's new buildings going up, new different kinds of architecture. Um, there's just always something happening. So I hate to sound like such a Yankees fan and such a New York fan, but uh, I still can't think of anywhere else I'd rather live uh, than here. Shoot from the heart. Ooh, that's a good one. <laughs> I think that I should just stop at that. Shoot from the heart. I think. Um, would be the best, you know, I think um, it really doesn't matter, you know, I like to take good quality photographs, I like to try and have the light a certain way and the person stand a certain way, even though it's all very natural, it happens very quickly. I work very quickly and work with what I'm given. Um, I don't really pose the people or anything, I just kind of work with who I think that person is. But what I think um, the, the honesty of it is, I think people like to live vicariously. I mean, it's the whole idea of this reality TV. They like to live vicariously through other people and, and see other people's ideas and other people's take on the world. So whether you're taking it with just a little digital camera, if you're actually taking pictures that uh, mean something to you in a real way and you actually have something to say, people will follow that blog, you know, because you'll find like-minded people. Um, but by doing that, I think, you know, one of the things that separates me is, you know, I don't shoot just all 20-year-old hipsters, you know, I shoot old and young and and that that brand comes across in the variety of people I shoot because I actually have something to say and I can do that as opposed to saying one thing over and over, it gives me a, a wider vocabulary to be able to shoot people in a lot of different ways and a lot of different types of people, but you always know it's one of my shots and that's because, you know, I take it very seriously. And, uh, and I have a real passion about it, I have a real point of view. And uh, so I think you know, that's what someone has to do. They, before just deciding, oh, I think I want to go out and take pictures of people on the street, I think they really have to have a point of view. You know, it's very important what I don't shoot as opposed to what I do shoot. There's a lot of people in the fashion business I've never shot. Um, so without a, a real passionate point of view, I don't think there's anything you can do. Because then it just becomes a, a, a report on product. And there's a lot of blogs like that, and I think they're incredibly boring. You know, just a report of what's out there uh, doesn't do anything for me. Well, passion and a point of view, number one. Uh, consistency. You know, you have to be able to create a consistent voice because if you're blogging, in a real way, you know, uh, I think you have to do it very regularly. If it's not five days a week or six days a week, in a way that people start to know when they can come see your blog, um, when there's going to be new images up. Not always, it doesn't have to be exactly the same time every day. You know, it's not so bad to keep them guessing, not so bad to have them coming back once or twice. But there has to be a consistency in the voice um, because you just can't fake it five days a week. Um, so I think that's really important. Uh, I think the next generation of blogs is going to be just like the beginning of, of websites. You know, you could kind of do it on your own and kind of have it and it didn't look great necessarily, but now, you know, blogs are getting very sophisticated. And uh, I think people are going to have to really start to be serious about the way the blog looks. And it's, you know, the days, I think, of um, just being able to steal images from all over the place to put them on your blog and just putting another two cents in on somebody else's conversation, it's pretty close to over because the blog's not going to be able to grow that way. The blog is only going to be able to grow once you're in control of all the content. And I think that's why street style blogs have grown so quickly is, you know, we're in control of the visuals, we're in control of the writing. You know, if you're using a particular kind of blog, you can be more in control of the, of the fonts and the graphics and everything else. I don't know, you can't really do anything. You know, I mean, at least for me anyway, because, um, you know, it's so many different things, you know, I mean, it's the clothes themselves, it's the person, uh, it's, uh, I just have to, you know, that's the artist. You know, there's no, if, I wish I could say as a marketer, well, you know, if you're wearing this brand and blah, 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 um, that will make it really interesting, but it's not, you know, that's the artist in me. You know, sometimes you meet someone and there's just something that clicks, you know, and it might be an obvious kind of beauty or uh, a non-obvious kind of beauty or just something that you feel. You know, I shot this woman in, um, 
in Barcelona the other day, this beautiful older woman, and she, you know, really beautifully aged face and very perfectly done hair and fur coat and, um, you know, she was definitely not typical traditional beauty, but there was just something so um, charming about her. And I don't think she'd end up on anybody else's blog, but, you know, that, that is definitely part of my vocabulary. And I'm sure she didn't get up that day thinking, what should I wear to be shot by the sartorialist? I know he's in town. Um, but, you know, that's the fun of it. You know, you just never know. There are people I see all the time that you would think, mm, you know, maybe be on the blog, but if I don't feel something and don't feel that I'm going to be able to shoot it the way that I want, then it doesn't really matter. But all black is pretty boring. If you're going to do all black, you better do some good proportion or texture or something like that. Color, pattern, things like that, that actually real elements of design uh, are always a good, good place to start. My heroes are my mom and dad. Um, and uh, I think just anyone that succeeds at what they do through really you know, trying to do something unique and different and uh, interesting, something that maybe, not that people told them would never work, but that, um, you know, really, you know, says something about who they are and how they saw something differently. And, uh, and it's a bunch of different things, you know, the guys that do the, the Mac computers, you know, the design for the Mac computers, I think are great. I don't know if they'd be a hero, but someone I definitely look up to, you know, take that chance of saying, you know, we're going to do them in color now. And then knowing as someone that used to work in, in the fashion business how tough that is to go to the stores and say we want you to buy these computers in color now and that they're going to come back and say oh how are you going to buy i don't know what color what percentage but what color and what computer and all that someone that has such a passion for something and is willing to really um, go through all the steps and be able to sell that concept to somebody um, you know whether it's designing the mac computer whether it's armani in the 80s you know doing the completely different kind of design for women, whether it's um, Bruce Weber kind of figuring out how to uh, shoot people in a, a wholesome but sexy way. You know, those are the people that I look at that uh, I think I'm the most inspired by uh, in terms of their work. An ethical dilemma? Um, I don't think it was an ethical dilemma, but I did have to figure out how I would handle having advertising on the blog. Um, because I knew that there would be certain people saying, oh, well, you know, here it goes. It's, you know, the blogs are going to go downhill because they're going to have advertising and they're just going to shoot. American Apparel was one of the first advertisers on the site. And I was prepared for people to start saying, oh, now we're going to start seeing a lot of American Apparel or whatever. But that never happened. You know, I think the sincerity and the integrity of the blog, the fact that um, I was able to have advertising and it's never affected any of the work on the site that you never see anything about American Apparel on the site unless it's something I see and someone happens to be wearing American Apparel that the in absolute integrity and sincerity is still there. I just shot a big story for Burberry, a big ad campaign, and I announced it because I was very proud of the work and showed some of the pictures that I really liked from that project and uh, probably did three or four posts but I didn't put anything in there about you know where to buy the trenches, no information about it. I was just you know showing the photographs I was very proud of from that project. And the audience totally understood it, you know, they, they, um, but at the same time, I love, Bur you know, Burberry, and I was very happy to work with that, and I think the new reality is, sometimes people have a hard time handling the new reality is, you know, um, uh, you know, I'm an artist, and I'm a, um, I guess, you know, that's the only way you could say it, I don't really consider mys myself a, a journalist, I'm not trying to sell you something, I'm not trying to tell you the story of these things, I'm just showing you my pictures, so I feel totally comfortable saying, I love Burberry, or Ralph Lauren or whatever because uh, those are things that I like and um, so that's uh, you know I, that's hard for some people to be able to understand that but because it's so consistent and I've been so consistent in how I present those things and how I let them uh, be you know, manifest themselves on the blog that's what I think uh, has been able to keep the sincerity and keep the audience um, believing in what I do the worst career advice? Uh, I don't know. I've never really had much career advice. My dad always gave me great advice. And, um, you know, I think, uh, I mean, I hate to say it, but, you know, I wasn't a good corporate person. You know, everything that uh, made me horrible working in a corporation was perfect for this kind of job. So uh, uh, I never really got bad advice. 
because I never really asked for any. I think it'd be maybe like Pablo Picasso. I think he was probably crazy. I mean, I know he was crazy. I think everyone says he was crazy. So I think you just wouldn't know what would happen at dinner. You know, I'd love to talk to him about art and how he challenged himself and was always trying to look for a new way of expressing his artistic, uh, his artistic uh, expression or whatever. But uh, I think he also would probably do something crazy at dinner and, and that would be fun. Maybe him and, and uh, Tracy Morgan. The fact that uh, I always thought that I knew um, better than the people I was working for. And that's, that's not good. <laughs> that's not uh, a good uh, thing to think that you always know better than the people that are your bosses. And, uh, and it always created a problem for me. I always thought I had a good point of view on this, that, and whatever. And, uh, and it turned out to be okay. But you know, at some point, you know, it always created problems for me working corporately. And uh, so at some point, my dad said, you know, it can't always be them. So at some point, it's got to be you. You're the only thing that's consistent in this. And that's hard. You don't want to hear that from your dad. Um, but uh, you know, it was probably true. And I think it helped me realize that either I got to put up or shut up. And, uh, and so I'm glad that when I went out and worked on my own, I don't have all the answers, but you know, I really had to push myself to handle all the different areas, you know, because it's not just photography, it's running the business and it's accounting, all these different kind of things. So, you know, now I have, I have um, the challenge of actually trying to go out there and learn a lot of different things to make it all keep going.